Hey guys, Brock here. Thanks for stopping by. Um, if you are a Game of Thrones fan, uh, or even if you've just been on the internet today, I'm sure you are aware of the uh, ridiculousness that is the internet going crazy over finding a Starbucks cup in the latest episode of Game of Thrones. Um, if you are a Game of Thrones fan and you have not caught up to the latest episode, you might want to skip this until you do. Um, there are some uh, characters here, not really a spoiler, but you know, if you don't want to know who's still alive at a certain point, then maybe you don't want to watch this. Um, I woke up this morning and I actually my mother texted me about um, a Starbucks cup being in the episode of Game of Thrones. I feel kind of silly because I didn't even notice it and my mom told me about it. Um, but the internet caught on and they started doing their meme thing and it's all over the place. I felt the need that I needed to make a video about this because when I do visual effects work, a lot of times the work that I do is not very flashy, um, but the work that I do does save uh, studios from moments like this. Um, I often have to remove items that should not be in the shot, whether they knew that they were there while they were filming or someone forgot that uh, it was actually in the set and it wasn't caught until later. So that's exactly what was going on here. Someone had a Starbucks on during break and left it on the table and somehow it made it through um, not only production but it made it through the edit and no one caught on to it so I thought that I would come through and uh, do a little demo on how I would go about removing this coffee cup so uh, I hope that you have a few moments to see a little bit of what I do uh, actually when I'm working on feature films um, and see how I could have uh, saved HBO from this slight embarrassment uh, so let's just get going obviously the first thing you want to do is take a look at your footage here and I've just pulled it straight into After Effects CC uh, so I'm going to preview it as you can see, the camera doesn't move very much, but there is a shadowy figure here um, that is passing in front of the cup, so we will want to keep that in mind. So the first thing you want to do with something like this is track it, and I've got Mocha Pro. Now, After Effects does come with Mocha for After Effects, but I'm going to use Mocha Pro because that's my preferred way of working um, and right from the jump I'm actually going to duplicate this footage um, I'm gonna use this one for tracking and I'm gonna come back later and use this one for another purpose but just so that I remember which one I tracked I'm gonna go ahead and call it tracked alrighty and you want to go to effect and under effect I believe it is Boris effect so I like I said I'm using Mocha Pro Mocha AE CC comes with After Effects. You can use that. It's just as good. Uh, the workflow is just slightly different. So let's open up Mocha Pro here and go ahead and click on it. So in Mocha Pro, again, our footage loads up right away. Um, we want to kind of scrub through until we get a clean frame. So we can see this is probably a clean frame here. Um, and looking throughout the shot, we want to find something that is close to what we want to remove, which again is this cup, um, but is visible for the majority of the shot. And actually this bowl here looks like it's visible for the entire shot. So we're going to track that bowl and that should do us very well. Um, now in Mocha you have a few different options here. I think by default it loads into Essentials. I do not like that. I like to work in the classic view. Um, gives me the controls that I'm used to from older versions. All right, let's go ahead and load our tool here, and we are just going to go ahead and do a rough outline of this bowl. All right, it doesn't have to be too perfect because we're not going to actually use the spline, we're just using it for tracking. So we'll go ahead and track that through the shot. I didn't adjust any settings, I just let it go with defaults. It's doing large motion. 
um, and all of these options besides perspective because our perspective is not shifting. Okay, and that's going to go through and then stop, and that is it. You can see, I mean, if you scrub through, that it's following it pretty well. Okay. And I'm going to turn tracking off. I'm going to call that track. And I'll lock it. Then the next thing we want to do is try to track this foreground element. Now it is mostly just a black blob, so tracking that automatically is not going to go very well. We could spend the time and uh, track it by hand, frame by frame, um, and we don't have too many frames here. We've got about seven, eight frames, but just for the sake of expediency here, I'm going to go ahead and just try to do an automatic track. Again, we're going to pull out our X-Blind tool, just kind of roughly go around it now. With this one, the closer we get to the cup, the more accurate we want to be. And you see, I'm just kind of looking for that edge there. And then when we get to the end, we can just kind of right click to get rid of it, fix this a little bit. And I already know going into it that it's not going to be a very accurate track. Now what I'm doing here is just kind of smoothing that out so it's not so jagged because we will be using the splines here. Um, okay, so we are on the last frame. I'm going to go ahead and track to the front of the clip and let's see how it does. And you see it's following it pretty well considering it's just a big blob. Um, it is not perfect and we can go in and clean that up. Okay, and so we can scrub through. Again, we can come in here and let's go ahead and on the first frame, maybe move a couple of points. And since I've got my auto key on, it is actually adding a key there. And that way I can then go in on a different frame and see this is very far off. So I can kind of pull these guys in and it will automatically put the in between keyframes. You can see it kind of follows it. All right, and that's going to be pretty good, uh, actually good enough for this shot. Now, if this was something that I was working on for, uh, say, HBO, uh, I would obviously put in more time and effort to clean it up. Um, but for our purposes for this demo, you get the idea of what I'm doing here. So I'm just going to go ahead and lock that, and I'm going to unlock track. And we're going to go back to this one here. Um, I'm going to find, oh, I was already on a good frame. So what I want to do with this is you can go in and export your tracking data as just transform data. Um, that is not accurate enough for me. I prefer to do corner pin data. And so what I'm going to do here is come up here and click show planar surface. And you see it gives you this little blue box. And I'm just going to pull that out so that it is around that cup. Now what it's doing is it is taking all of the data from this um, bowl here and is going to apply that to wherever we put the corner pin. So the farther away from the bowl, the less accurate it will be. In this case, it should be pretty accurate. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say something like that. Okay, and then go to export tracking data we're going to do this drop down and I want to do After Effects corner pin and the one that supports Mocha import. Now Mocha import, I'm just going to hit copy clipboard and exit, save. Mocha import does not come with After Effects, but it is a very useful tool. Um, it's actually Mocha import plus. And so what we're going to do here, I'll show you why it's beneficial in this situation. Um, we're going to click on, remember I had made a duplicate of the footage. This has no effects on it. Um, it is just the footage straight out of the project. And let me just pull this down here so I can really see what's going on. Alrighty, and Mocha import. Sometimes these things get a little weird, so let's do that. 
All right, Mocha Import Plus, let's do it this way. All right, there we go. So we want Mocha Import Plus. Sorry, the panels are being weird. And we used Mocha Pro. So we're just going to change that drop down to Mocha Pro. And we are doing it from clipboard because in Mocha, I copied it to my clipboard. Now, the first thing you want to do is hit load, and that's going to take the data from your clipboard and load it into Mocha Import Plus. And just go ahead and hit OK. And then remember, we want to choose the footage that does not have the uh, Mocha effect on it. See, this one has Mocha effect. We want the other one that has no effect on it. And then in Import Plus, we are going to do Stabilize Precomp and hit Apply. Hit OK. Now, it looks like nothing happened, right? I can turn this off and on and nothing happens and I can scrub through the entire shot, maybe come in right here and you can see that nothing is going on. But this is pre-composed. If we go inside this pre-composition, look at that. This is the cup and it's kind of stretched out. So what it did was it took that um, let me just go back in here. When we were in Moga, and I was on the track layer, I turned on this planer. So what it did is it took this rectangle and it corner pinned it to, in this case, 1920 by 1080, the size of the footage, and put that in a pre-comp and then use the tracking data to put it back in place. So if I come in here, ideally this will now be stabilized. So if I preview this footage, you can see that cup stays pretty much in place. And the lighting flickers and it's not perfect, but this is going to be close enough. Okay, so now that we've got our stabilized pre-comp, um, there's a number of ways you can go about the next step, which is basically just to remove this cup. Um, you can take a freeze frame of this and pull it into Photoshop and then paint it out. Um, you can, you know, piecemeal pieces of footage. Uh, what I'm going to do is the quick route here and just use After Effects clone tool. So I'm going to open this. Um, well, I'm going to hold control and double click on this guy or maybe it's alt i never remember which one it is it's actually looks like it's alt so i want to make sure that i am opening yep okay and you see it'll load as a layer and we can preview it and you can see it still stays in place now what we want to do is come to a clean frame without this guy in the foreground come to a clean frame and load the clone stamp tool. That's why we have to load as a layer because this only works if you load it as a layer. And I'm going to hold alt and what that's going to do is sample the footage. So let's just go ahead and sample right here. We've got this nice hard edge that we can use as a reference and we're just going to kind of paint that in removing the cup. Now you don't want to go too far but you do want to take into consideration the shadow from the cup. So we're going to come in here and so you can see this one was in the wrong place. What we can actually do is come into effects. I'm just going to press E to open effects and clone two. We can go into transform and position. We can adjust that a little bit. I just clicked on it once and I'm using the arrow keys to adjust it just to line that up. Okay. And you want to use as few clones as possible because it gets unruly if you use too many. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and do this. Now if we had the raw footage before it was color time this would be a lot easier. There would be um, more light, more detail. Um, but I think this is going to work out all right. Now another thing you want to notice is um, right here where we are um, the clone stamp is going to start on whatever frame we are. So prior to that, the cup still exists. So we want to grab these three clone stamps and drag them to the start. 
And now, since our entire comp is stabilized, we shouldn't have to do any tracking because we did the tracking ahead of time. So if we scrub through, you should see that the cup is gone, right? But what's happening? When this guy comes with his head over the cup, it's getting darker because we are sampling from over here. So we are sampling each frame from this area and pulling it into here. So as this area gets darker, as his head comes over, suddenly all of this is black and that's no good for us. But what we can do is figure out at what frame it's no longer viable. So it looks like about right here. So at this frame, we are going to do another clone stamp, but in this, at this time, we are going to say lock source time. Okay. And we are going to hover our mouse, click while holding alt. So that's sampling. Then without moving the mouse, let go of alt. And then we're going to just start painting in the area that we already replaced. And you want to go a little bit wider than what you did. And what that's going to do is since we chose lock source time, this is not going to sample every frame. It's going to sample only the one frame that we're on. Okay. And then we'll grab this and pull it to the front. And then what I'm going to do is actually stop the frame, stop the paint on this frame. So let's see what that looks like. So go back. Okay. It looks like it might just work. Now you can see, obviously, this looks weird here, um, but it should be fine. And I'm going to show you why in a moment. But his head does come back in at the end, so we want to fix that as well. And it looks like only a few frames, so we can come in and actually probably duplicate this clone. Just drag this one to the end. And let's see, maybe about right here. And let's see what that looks like. Not bad. Okay, so if we just preview that. Okay, the cup's gone. All right. And so, like I said, this doesn't look very good. Obviously, we can see that it's all janky. But now we are going to go back into our original comp. Let me just go ahead and rename this so you can tell what's going on. Okay. And in this comp, we're going to see what's where we are right now. So let's just preview it again. Look, that cup's gone. That was really, really simple. You know, all the money that HBO spent on this episode, and they could have gotten away with it in about five minutes or however long this has been. Okay, maybe it's been more like 16 minutes, but... Uh, yeah, so obviously we want to figure out what's going on here, sort that out, and probably at the end as well. Actually, the end doesn't look too bad. So what we're going to do for that is we're going to go back to our tracked comp. We're going to go into the Mocha effect. And remember, we tracked this guy's head. So we're going to go to Matt, and we're going to... Um, so there's a number of ways you can do it. You can actually just use this layer as a, a mat. Um, I like to create the AE masks. And we're going to go in here and I'm going to copy. Layer 2 was the guy's head. So just need layer 2. I'm going to go ahead and do a new solid layer. Pull this above here. And making sure I'm on frame 1, I'm going to paste the mask. Okay. Now this is going to alpha invert mat or maybe it's alpha mat yeah it's alpha invert mat okay so this layer here um, I would rename it but the way the uh, power pen is working uh, if you change the name sometimes it doesn't know what it's referencing anymore um, because this is all keyframed in uh, with code so I'm not going to rename it, but just know that this is our comp that we painted it with. And this is our roto. So we do not want this layer to appear when this guy's head is visible. 
And so we want this to be alpha inverted. I chose luma invert. That's why it wasn't working right. And you can see now we've got a harsh edge here. So we're going to go into our mask. I just hit F to go to feather and I'm going to feather that, let's say 50. Okay. And without doing anything else, let's see what it looks like. Does not look bad. Looks pretty good. Okay. And then on that first frame, you can see there's a little thing here I want to get rid of. I think I'll have to go back in to the paint and fix that. And then also you can see, let's zoom in a little bit, the cup's kind of showing up again here. So we can fix that really easily. We're just going to go ahead and do a circle mask. And this one's going to be a subtract. I'll feather that guy. I hit F to feather. And let's see, 25 is probably going to do it. And we want it visible on this layer, on this frame, excuse me. And probably no longer visible here. Let's see what that looks like. That'll probably work. And then at the end, yeah, okay. That was a little quick fix for that. So let's zoom out. And again, we want to go back in. And the, the first frame, we want to try to address this little black spot. So we're going to do that in the paint layer. Alrighty, let's go ahead and choose our clone. We still have it on lock source time. And we need to go to, right now we're in composition. Uh, that's not going to allow us to paint anything. We need to go to the layer. And let's go ahead and just sample this and kind of paint it. I'm going to undo that. I don't like that, what I just did right there. Let's go ahead and sample right here. Okay. And let's see what's going on. Why is it doing that? So you have different options for paint and sometimes it gets a little weird if you add a new paint into the same effect. So I'm just going to delete this one, which is the one I just did. Oh, oh, okay. I know what it did. Okay. What it, what happened was I had clone four selected. And so it overwrote clone four and without clone four, this is just a big black mass. So, um, I don't want to overwrite clone four. So I'm going to deselect everything, just click on the layer, and then I'm going to apply my paint again. So sometimes you have to troubleshoot what you're doing. And then I can see a little bit of detail here. I don't want, so I'm going to paint over it again. And again, I still have lock source time on. So for these two, new ones. I'm going to make sure they are only as long as that. And let's see what it looks like now. I think that will probably do it. All right. And I'm going to go into here and actually I'm going to deselect lock source time while I'm thinking about it because in most cases I don't want to use that and I'm going to come back one day and not remember I'd done that. It's going to make me lose a lot of time. So uh, now with that fix in place, let's see what it looks like. And look at that. No cup. So that Starbucks ad has now been removed. Now, again, this is not perfect. If I were getting paid to do this, uh, if, if HBO said, hey, we've got this element that should not be there. I would spend more time and make it even better. Um, but I think you can see that, you know, with a little bit of effort, you can re remove things as if they never happened and uh, the world would not be the wiser. So I hope you enjoyed this. Um, if you've got any questions, go ahead and let me know in the comments and I'll try to address them for you. This is actually the first time that I do a tutorial like this but when the opportunity arose I couldn't pass it up so uh, I'm sure it was a little bit rough if you have any questions or you need me to clarify anything uh, just let me know and I will do that 
and uh, if anyone from HBO is watching this, I hope you can uh, stomach me poking a little fun at you. But uh, I know you've got a few more Game of Thrones projects in the works, so if you need anyone to remove some coffee cups in the future, uh, just get in touch with me. My uh, visual effects website is shakeandblur.com. I'll go ahead and link my IMDB in the comments as well. Uh, so thanks for sticking around, guys. I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, I'll see you in the next one.